Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is so good to have you here. I have something very, very different, but something I'm very excited about. As some of you might know, I have started a ServiceNow training cohort. This is for people who have taken boot camps or have gotten to a, a journey in their self-learning and they still need to bridge the gap between that and a job. And in my cohort, we have gone through three lessons so far. And after that third lesson, I gave them an app exercise. And just to make sure it was extra hard, it was an app that they would have had no previous experience with. As some of you might also know, I do soaping as a hobby. And so I came to them with the proposition of, I produce soap and I am unhappy with my process and you have to build me an app to help me deal with that. And so it is also my pleasure to introduce you to Tracy Curry. Uh, some of you might have seen her around on LinkedIn, but we're gonna figure out what Tracy's all about in this video and uh, see some of her very special talent. She was the first member of the cohort to crack the code and get the app built and working. She did that in a number of hours. Tracy, today, thank you for coming. Thank you, thank you for having me. Why don't you tell the audience how this thing got started? So we started out with you, Cam, and said, I need an app. And we said, what kind of app do you need? And we just started with requirements gathering and, and started out by asking you, what do you want the app to do? Is it is the, is the point of the app for you and your internal use only, or will it be a customer facing app? And then we went from there building out the, the data structure. And did I make it easy uh, on you? Did I feed you all the information up front? No, not at all. It was like pulling teeth. <laughs> what made it difficult? <laughs> the language barrier between not knowing anything about making soap and then you knowing everything about making soap and then and then bridging that gap and then kind of getting into your mind and seeing how you were thinking about it, it helped me think forward. And what was the problem I was trying to solve? So the problem right now was understanding your ingredient reserves. You didn't want to go in to make a recipe unless you had enough of the requ required ingredients on hand. Okay, just to give some visual proof of that, this is olive oil. I need 14 ounces per batch of this and not being super familiar with ounces. Like, I don't know if that's 14 ounces or not. I suspect not, but I'd wanna be really sure because I have five other types of oil I put in a recipe and I don't wanna waste those as well. So if I'm not enough, I wanna make sure I go out and buy some before I do a batch. Also, this is kind of big and I don't wanna be having like two or three of these sitting around in case one gets low. I wanna buy my ingredients just in time. To us, it's just kind of silly. It's Rob's soaping hobby, but this is actually like legit manufacturing. <laughs> so yep. it can, this is a lighter version of very real problems. Yeah. Tracy, why don't you share your screen? Okay, so I started out very at the bottom level with the ingredients table. I entered information just for a demo recipe so that I had you know, visuals to build off of. And I put in very basic numbers so that I could see, see the numbers change as I was doing it, except for two of them here are zero. So I could, I would know if you didn't have enough. A, a ingredient has what properties? Each ingredient just has the category that it's in. It has a name and it has what it's measured in. And, and then the remaining quantity, this is your inventory. So this is the master list. This is where I would go and find out what am I running low on? If you wanted to do it the hard way, you'd go to this list. <laughs> Great, you're way ahead of me then. Okay, <laughs> what came next? So next I built the recipes table. I just have one demo recipe in here, but you could see there's an image of it. The category, this one is manly, because I mean, just look at it. Oh, yeah. And then uh, a description, like then I put it in HTML so that you could Put in anything you wanted in here and you could, you know, make it fancy with, I did bullet points, you can do bold, you can do colors, you can make anything pop right there. And then a related list down below of the ingredients on that recipe. So this brings in one of the many to many tables that I made using your video on your LinkedIn channel, the okay. magic in the middle one, because one recipe will have many ingredients, but one ingredient in that list could be in many recipes. So we needed a way to mesh those two together. For those of you watching at home, if you just hit the I button in the top right hand corner of the YouTube video, we'll have a link to the many to many video that Tracy is talking about. So that's it, we're done, right? No, you don't make them all at one time, right? You make one batch at a time. Okay. And when you make a batch, you wanna pick which recipe you're going to make in that particular batch. So in the batch table, you go to the batch form, it starts out in draft mode. Once you have your soap makers, uh -huh. You're going to assign these tasks to individuals. You're going to assign them a pending date, a plan date. So this is the date you start planning, obviously. And then this is what gets the ball rolling. Do I have enough ingredients? This is what's going to initiate or trigger off one of the flows that I've created. So you pick out the recipe name. Mm -hmm. 
off of this reference list here. Right now we only have one. Obviously in the future you have more. Once you save this file and it's going to go and use the many, many to many table, it's going to another many to many table. It's going to pull in the ingredients for that batch of that particular recipe. And then it's also going to look up the inventory for each one. And it's going to compare the inventory for this batch compared to what you have on hand and give you a visual indication if you have enough or not. What's important about that list of ingredients on the batch? How does it know which ingredients to get? From the recipes, so it's linked because the ingredients are linked to recipe and then the batch pulls up that recipe so it knows which ingredients come along with that recipe. Okay, so are these the many-to-many -many table that you built between recipe and ingredient? No, this is a new many-to-many -many for ingredients per, re per batch. Okay, so, so there's, there's basically- many -many so basically the idea is the recipe is the, the plan of the ingredients, but the batch is the execution of the ingredients. Yes. So just off the top of my head, that sounds like it might be a little bit complicated, right? Like how do I get records from this many to many and put them in another many to many? How did you accomplish that? Oh, so I'd made a flow, one of two flows that I created for this app. And so we started off pulling in the, the triggering it when the batch, is initiated in draft phase, okay. draft state. So I have, I realize now I have an extra step in here, but that's part of the learning process, right? Is knowing that I have too many steps that I do not need. Um, so future version, I wouldn't have this one in here, but this one, it goes and finds the recipe, which obviously the batch already had the recipe. Okay. So then it's going to look up the ingredients on the recipe table because the batch picked out which recipe I wanted, right? right. So it's going to use that name of that recipe to go into the ingredients and any ingredient that matches, it's going to say, okay, this is one for this batch. Right. But you're talking about the ingredient on the recipe, not the ingredient raw table, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Right. So it's grabbing the recipe from the batch. Okay. And then what happens? The way I designed this flow, we're going to go through and look up the remaining amounts on hand of each of the ingredients that are required for this recipe. Okay, so we got to look up In the ingredients. ingredients okay, so now we're looking up the ingredients records as well. Okay. Okay, so next week we're going to look through each item on the ingredient on recipe and we're going to create a batch record from that. That's going to go onto the ingredient on batch table. Okay. And so while I, while I create those records and then I had it looped through, if we had enough of the ingredient compared to the ingredient table remaining on hand, it's going to set the I have enough field to true. Otherwise, if we don't have enough, it's going to set that to false. And that's where the red and green dots came into play. Okay. So the batch ingredient has a property called I have enough. Yes. So what it's doing is it's looping through each ingredient on the recipe and it's going to create an equivalent ingredient. Can you just open the create ingredient on batch record, uh, node five? It's connecting it to the batch, which we got from the trigger, it looks like. And yes. then it's uh, referencing the ingredient from the ingredient from the recipe. And then it's getting the amount also from the uh, ingredient from the recipe. And then it's putting yes. all of those on an ingredient for the batch. And yes. then what we're saying is, okay, so how did you figure out if you had enough? So that was a... Okay, so it looks like you said if the amount of what's what the ingredient recipe wants. So ingredient recipe was node four, right? Yes. If that's greater than or is the look no, I actually did it a little backwards. I have okay. the, if the, yeah, if the ingredient on the recipe record is greater than, yeah, greater than the now amount needed. Okay. Then we're good. Mine's backwards then like if you, cause if you would do it as I have insufficient, I don't have enough. Right. It'll be backwards from this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, they both wind up, they get you the same result, right? So, yes, they do. and we can always refine this, you know what I mean, later. But the important thing is that you took a, what I would consider a very difficult beginner concept, which is you have many to many tables at all. And you're essentially yeah. saying, I have to, they're, they're not the same many to many. They, they represent different relationships, <laughs> even yeah. though. Like one will say activated charcoal five grams. <laughs> yeah. uh, the, the, they can both say that. So you decided, okay, structure them in two separate tables and mm -hmm. then have the workflow that creates them on the second table based off the first, but also adds an evaluation in there about do I have yes. enough from a third table? So yes. you're pulling in three or four tables in here and you're creating records 
you put them on the batch and you offer a warning. Can you show us uh, show us a warning really quick on the on the batch? Part was fun for me. I was on a mission to figure out the, the tiny little line of script to make these work. But there you go. I used the field styles. Right. So now if, if I structured my soaping business beyond just me and I had like a whole bunch of people making soap and I could basically see of the soaps that we have planned to batch on Saturday, are we, are we low on anything that we need to run out and get right away? And here we'd see at least for this one batch, we've got, uh, we're low on olive oil and coconut oil, which sucks because that's the thing we need the most of. That's our yeah. top two ingredients. Yeah. Right. So next steps in the second sprint, I'm going to compile this into its own table, its own module that's for you, like basically kind of like a shopping list. Oh, so okay. Any, any batch that's planned that doesn't have enough, it's going to uh, list all that out for you to know what you need to get. Just the ingredients on batch that don't have enough, essentially is what yes. you're saying. Yeah. Cool. What do you think was the hardest thing for you to pull off in this whole venture? Figuring out the flow and, and because there's so many aspects of data here, they, and it was a lot of trial and error and just testing things out. And then I really learned that way, okay, this node already has this information and this is what it spits out for this one. So really getting a good understanding of the data structure and how, how each piece talked to each other while doing this was pretty cool. How much code did you have to write? None. And th did, that make you, as well. did that make you happy or sad? It was happy. <laughs> <laughs> but I did learn from your, um, your lesson about flow variables um, mm -hmm. and creating those and what they are. So next time I would actually use those and it would probably make some of this a lot easier. But being able to figure it out with just my very basic little brain, uh -huh. it was pretty rewarding. Talk, talk to me about how you would have used flow variables. So if I had used flow variables down in the, in the if statement, I could have created one so that it already just held onto this information and it didn't have to go back and forth. So I could have created the record with the proper update at the same time instead of two trips to the server. What would you have stored in the variable? The true false, whether we had enough or not. Okay. So you're saying basically you would have a flow variable that you would set to figure out, do I have enough or not? set the flow yeah. variable to that. And then when you created the ingredient record, you would just set yeah. the, am I, do I have enough to whatever the flow variable was? Yeah. Okay. And wh why again, was that, would that be advantageous? It would just eliminate one trip to the server instead of two. It has to create the record uh -huh. and then it has to go back and update the same record. Oh, so. I see. Okay. So it'd be like one database transaction. Right. All right. So that was, uh, that was one of the really difficult problems. What was the second difficult problem? The second one was the aggregation. So updating your inventory after a batch was marked complete. I created a, a flow to trigger upon when the state is changed to done. Mm -hmm. It would get the ingredients that was used in the batch, batch on ingredient, ingredient on batch table, many to many. So that specific batch, right? And it would take that and subtract from your remaining ingredients and update your inventory for next time. And how did you do the subtraction? So that one actually involved a script. So I, I learned a lot about this. I didn't know this before, but you basically can create these scripts just like dot walking. It was super fun and neat to make something that simple happen in this three little lines. So what do you say? It's just like dot walking. Can you explain that real fast? So I'll, I'll show you. So, so FD data means flow designer data. This is what it has available. And then it's just going to show you, like, I, I want to look up a record from node three. Oh, okay. And then next step, what is node three has available to it? All of these items. So I want a record from node three. And then what do I want from that record? I want the remaining quantity from that record. Oh. So basically okay. dot, walk, dot walk your way through scripting, which was neat. So that just, that did the math. So I did the same thing. I, I found value of the remaining quantity. I found the number that it needed to subtract from that batch and then subtracted the to subtract batch usage from the current value and updated the ingredients listing with whatever was remaining after that. And that was that. And then what are you updating the batch record with? Notes that says the remaining ingredients have been updated and that's in the journal feature of the batch. Why did you have to break these two? Like, well, how come you couldn't adjust the ingredient remaining quantities as you added the recipe ingredients to the batch ingredients. So what happens if you cancel a batch or if you do it later or you don't have enough or you waste something, mm -hmm. you need that trigger point of I'm done. I did this to know when to subtract the actual usage. 
All right, folks, so there you have it. Uh, the Robert Fedoric ServiceNow cohort, first member to build the fully composed app, and she did it in hours, Tracy Curry. Great work, figured out what I needed when I wasn't just handing you a list of requirements. You learned all you needed to learn about the soap production process. You recognized that batches are tasky and have a state flow to them, and different things have to happen. Uh, at different intervals, you recognized that recipes and ingredients have a special many-to-many -many relationship. Batches and ingredients have a special many-to-many -many relationship. I wanna thank you again for taking the time to showcase this to the audience. Is there anything you'd like to tell the audience about what you're learning or what you found most profound about this exercise? I'm having so much fun. Like I learned a lot in the program I went through and I had a lot of fun doing it. And this is just taking it one step further, working with you and, and your cohort, just adding to what I learned from the program and how to think through things in maybe different perspectives and different ways. So, and finding new, new little features of the platform that I wasn't aware of before. Pretty enlightening. I like it. Okay, ServiceNow customers and partners. You heard that right. The Duke does have a ServiceNow training cohort. We're focused on deeply understanding what the ServiceNow platform is and does, as well as building true, credible build experience. You just watched a member of my cohort, Tracy Curry, describe an app that she built as an exercise for the third session in our cohort. This took her only a few hours and she demonstrated knowledge of Application Engine Studio, Flow Designer, and an excellent understanding of how to structure data based off of her conversations with the stakeholder. If you want to interview Tracy or any of my other excellent cohort members, hit me up at rob at the duke.digital. If you're interested in joining an upcoming cohort, hit me up at the same address. Unfortunately, at this moment, I can only support users in Canada and the United States. Can't wait to hear from you.